If a ball is thrown into the air with a velocity of 40 feet per second, its height in feet t seconds later is given by y equals 40 t minus 16 t squared. A. Find the average velocity for the time period beginning when t equals t 2 and lasting 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.01. And that's in seconds. So that's what we're trying to do. Alright, so we're going to be using this equation. It's going to be the equation for finding a secant line. I mean the slope of the secant line. And so this is what the equation is saying. It says S T of X T X minus S T I T X minus T I and I stands for the initial and X is these following numbers in seconds. So I will be our initial which is 2 because that's what it says, find average velocity at time period beginning when t equals 2. So that's going to be our initial our initial time. And then the following is going to be the time in x. Alright, so it says change in position divided by time elapsed. So let's see here. So we have our function s of whatever this is, which is 2.5. Why? Because we we start at the time 2 and then we add 0 0.5. So 2 plus 0 0.5 equals 2.5 and this is our initial, right? Our initial is 2 and 2 because that's the time elapses 2. So now we plug in these numbers into this function. So what happens here is 40 times 2.5 minus 16 times 2.5 squared, 100 t minus 16, so that's 16. Times 6.25, and that gives us 100 minus 100, that ends up equaling zero. And so now we're gonna solve for the function of S of two. 40 times 2 minus 16 square, 2 squared. That's 80 minus 16 times 4, which is 80 minus 64, which gives us negative 16. Negative 16 is right here. Divide that by 0.5 because we, we subtract the difference in time elapsed. And that gives us 0.5. If we divide that, that gives us negative 32 meters per second. Alright, so now we do the same process for this one. Except now we add 0.1 to 2. And so we plug that into our function. And for S2, it's already very solved for it, so we don't have to worry about that. We just keep plugging what we already know, which is negative 16. We solve for that. It ends up being negative 2.56. We divide that by 0.1 because 2.1 minus 2. And that ends up giving us negative 25. 0.6 meters per second. Alright, so now we have this next problem which says 0 0.05 seconds. Alright, so we add that to 2, so it would be 2.05 minus 2, and we plug that into our function of s, and we already know this is 16, so we solve for this, and then we end up getting negative 1.24. And then we divide that by 0 0.05, gives us 24.8 meters per second. And this should be negative, so let me fix that. So it'll be negative. And then the same thing over here. It's going to plug in 0 0.01 into the function of s. And remember, this is our point slope form right here. And we're, we have m. PQ and P2Q. And what does this f stand for? It stands for the, the secant line. And in order to find, us, to find the instantaneous velocity, we need to get really, really close to 
the point of interest, which is P. So we really want to get as close as we can get, get to P. So that's what's happening. We're trying to get our secant line close to P. All right, so we plug in these numbers. We end up getting negative 0.2416. We divide that 0 0.01, ends up becoming 24.16 meters per second. And so there's a there's some kind of trend happening here as these numbers are decreasing. And let me draw this graph one more time so you guys could see what I'm trying to tell you. So we got this point P and we have these these things these dots Q and these dots are where are they? There are secant lines. So we got a secant line like that. And we're trying to get these dots as close as we could get to P. Because we're trying to find a limit to P. And why would we do that? In order to find an instantaneous velocity when these points Q get as super close to P what happens is it converges converges right that's a, a term we use in mathematics it converges and then it forms the tangent line and so we want to find the slope of the tangent line but in order for us to do that, we first need to find these averages of the secant line. So these are average velocities. And when it gets to P, that becomes our instantaneous velocity. And so there's a trend happening right here. And these numbers are going really close to, we could make the assumption the number 24. And so this says estimate the instantaneous velocity when t equals 2. And it appears that as we shorten the time period, the average velocity is becoming closer to 24 meters per second. And so what is this called? Our instantaneous velocity. And this is the slope of the tangent line. So that's all we need to know about this. Thank you guys for watching this video. It means a lot to me to make these kind of videos. And it would mean a lot if you guys like this video and subscribe to my channel. It will help me to keep making content like this. Thank you once again and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye.